Go ahead. The top three ways to leverage Facebook Messenger automation and chatbots for every brand. Now, this is by no means the best ways. This is by no means the only ways. These are by no means the only ways. These are just how we're doing it and have found it to be effective for us and have gotten it to be our number 16 revenue channel in the last 30 days. Our, our, you know, when you look at revenue uh, that's coming in from a channel perspective into our brand that I'm about to show you in the last 30 days, this is already number 16 and we basically just started with this. So the first place I would recommend leveraging chatbot technology is with what I call bottom of funnel events. And in our case, this is someone who visited the shopping cart but did not buy. So it's basically all the way at the end of our sales funnel. When someone is super, super interested, interested enough to add a product to the shopping cart and then abandon, we're now using what is called messenger bot retargeting ads. And we've seen a 30% reduction in cost per acquisition. And I'm going to show you exactly how to set this up, exactly how we're using it and what that actually means. So our sales funnel looks like this. This is quite complex for those of you who are not familiar with sales funnels. I'm going to just run you through it really quickly. For those of you who are listening, this part of it uh, is very visual. So I'll try to my best to explain it. So we start with a native video advertisement on Facebook, which is designed to get someone to engage content and consume content from our brand without ever leaving the social network, without ever leaving the social medium, which we believe to be the best top of funnel conversion asset. And real quick, the reason we believe that, so my viewpoint is that your brand, I've got a lot of viewpoints if you have not, you know, got, if you haven't figured that out yet, I'm very opinionated, but uh, my viewpoint is that your brand is simply a collection of conversion assets working in concert with one another to achieve a conversion event. And those conversion assets include sales pages, emails, customer testimonials, videos, like there's all kinds of different conversion assets. And so if we know, if we've established that 67% of people are going to start um, a purchase a decision on one device and finish it on another, if we've established that 33% of people are, who show interest on a mobile advertisement are going to convert on a desktop, we've established that people are moving to bigger devices to make purchase decisions, then it makes sense to figure out if we know that most of our sales are coming from the second and third touch point and beyond to figure out what's the best initial touch point, what's the best top of funnel conversion asset. And in our viewpoint, it is a video because it gives people the ability to engage with you and consume content on your brand without ever leaving the social environment. It allows you to track who has consumed that video and follow up with them, which is what we do. So we run a video ad on Facebook to people who look like our customers. Um, we then follow up with folks who have consumed 50%, 75%, 95% of that ad and not yet purchased. We then are sending our traffic. All of our sales funnels are very long. And the reason why our sales funnels are very long, that they don't go, you know, advertisement sales page is because if we know that people need multiple touch points before they're willing to convert, which we have established based on data uh, from Facebook and other data sources, uh, then it makes sense to have your sales funnel have multiple steps so that you can retarget people based at every step. So what we do is we amplify a video that leads to an article, a pre-sell engagement page um, that's designed to engage someone in a conversation about a topic that they're interested in that is related to a problem or experience, a problem that they have or an experience that, experience that they're having that alludes to a solution. I'll say that again because I said it kind of fast and that solution is, is your product. So the article that we send people to, and I'll give you a specific example, I sell software. So I amplify a case study article about how that software helps you grow your Shopify business. And then that's a case study that, uh, you know, a, about a business owner that then alludes to a solution, which is my software. For my, my makeup brand, I amplify a piece of content that's five makeup tips for women over 40. So it's a piece of content that's about an experience that someone is having that alludes to a solution, which is my makeup line for women over 40, right? So I like to stick multiple uh, steps into my sales funnel. Now I'm gonna show you a sales funnel that doesn't have so many steps. So, so back to, um, and I'm saying this stuff a bunch of times for the folks who are listening. So video advertisement, uh, tracking people who consume 50%, 75%, 95% of that video, retargeting them, sending them to our article page. If you click through to the video, you go to the article page. If you don't make it further, if you just land on the article and then bail, we retarget you with more content because you haven't showed interest in our products yet. However, if you click through to our, our offer sequence, which in our case is a category page on an e-commerce store, we will retarget you with an ad if you bail out of the funnel at that point. If you make it to a product offer page, we're using dynamic advertising. If you make it to the shopping cart, 
we used to use dynamic product advertising, but now we're doing something different. I'm about to show that. So I just want to get even deeper here. So then there's our checkout sequence where we've got upsells and things like that. Now check this out. We then run an advertisement that's called bot X and not Y. So you remember that I said awareness, retargeting, loyalty, before, during, after. So we think of our brand in these pillars of awareness, which is new people who don't know about us yet, retargeting, which is people who've engaged with us at any step of our sales funnel, and then loyalty. And loyalty doesn't get a lot of love in our community. Everyone talks about traffic and conversion. They don't talk about repeat business. And my viewpoint is that repeat business is really how you build a brand. Half of my business in all of my brands come from people who bought from me in the past. And this is just one strategy that we leverage. So basically what we do is we run a video advertisement to people who bought our top product, but not our second product. So they bought our you know, most popular, but not our second most popular. Or they bought our second most popular and not our third most popular. We're creating dynamic segments of people in our CRM who fit these criteria. We are sending those dynamic segments to Facebook, which is creating audiences of people who've done bought one product and not the other. Then we run an advertisement to them saying, hey, would you be interested in this other product? We probably spend like, three grand a month on these types of ads and make about 45. So we don't spend a lot, but the ROI on the bot X, but not Y advertising is insane. Now let's take it another level deep because we decided and we talked about the idea of re-engaging people based on behavior. So if someone watches 50% of this video, but doesn't buy, we retarget them with an ad that says, Hey, are you sure you don't you know, are you sure that you're not interested in this product? Now think about how many levels deep we are here. We've gone through the awareness phase. We've gone through the retargeting phase. We've created a customer. We've advertised a video to them about a product we think they might be interested in. They've consumed 50% of that more or more of that video and not purchased. We've then retargeted them again in the loyalty pillar with an image ad because people need multiple touch points before they're willing to make a conversion event, even in the loyalty pillar. So this is you know, just breaking down our sales funnel for you, then we are obviously always amplifying uh, content to our subscribers and buyers. So this is just, you know, sort of a side conversation about multi-touch point, multi-step sales funnels. Now, this is how we, we do things. And we used to do um, the dynamic product advertising for people who visited our shopping cart, but didn't buy, which is simply just like, hey, you looked at this product, but you didn't buy it. Here it is again. I mean, that's really all it is. And so what we switched to doing was running an advertisement that said, hey, we, we, we are a big fan of incentivizing people to take action with small discounts. That's, mm -hmm. Some people argue against discounts. I am not one of those people. I use them everywhere. I use discounts and deadlines consistently across all my brands. Uh, and so in this case, we run an ad that says, hey, send us a message to get 10% off. So let me show you how we set this up and then I'm gonna show you the actual ad and then I'm gonna show you the statistics on this ad. So the first thing is that you create a Facebook advertising campaign with the objective of traffic. So Facebook um, is set up in these three, three settings. They, they, it's campaigns, ad sets, and ads. On the campaign level, you set the objective. On the ad set level, you set the targeting and placement. And on the ad level, you put the actual ad creative. So in this case, the objective for our campaign is the objective of traffic. It's not conversions. It's not uh, event you know, uh, responses. It's not any other. It's not page likes. It's traffic. That is the objective you need. And the reason you need that objective is because if you want to have a uh, Facebook Messenger pop up when someone clicks on your ad, you need to set that objective. So you set the objective of traffic. It's very important that in the ad set level, so we've now moved from our campaign level where we set the objective of traffic to our ad set level where we're going to set where this advertisement is actually going to show to people. So on the ad set level, we want to set the placement of Facebook feeds we want to uncheck every other placement because the only placement that this particular advertisement is allowed is in the Facebook feeds. So if you want to retarget people on all these other platforms who visited your cart and didn't buy, you would set up another campaign and you would set up in that ad set all the placements that weren't Facebook feeds and you'd set up your normal retargeting advertisement for people who visited your shopping cart and didn't buy and you could target them separately. However, we're finding that like 90% of the volume that we were getting in this ad set is on Facebook feeds anyways. So it's not really um, an issue. Uh, another sort of aside 
uh, well, you know, I'll actually, I'll remember it and I'll tell you guys later, but I have a, a little advertising uh, trick for you that I'll tell you after I'm done with this. I don't want to get too far off topic. So mm -hmm. you set Facebook feeds. Then in the ad set level as well, you set the destination where you want someone to go to be called website or messenger. And then obviously on the ad level, we're actually going to set it to messenger, but in the ad set level, the default destination is website or messenger. You just leave that alone. You set your budget, how much you want to spend. And that's going to be dictated by the size of your audience. In our case, we're spending $75 a day on this particular advertising. Then in the ad set level as well, you set the group of people that you want to see this ad, which in our case is people who visited our shopping cart but did not buy in the last 60 days. So, um, you know, I have a free uh, Facebook training that'll show you how to set up audiences and stuff. But basically, Facebook gives you the ability to build groups of people based on uh, URL events. So people who visited forward slash cart, you can build an audience of them. So you set that. Uh, who you want this to show to, which is the bottom of funnel event, which for you maybe is someone who made it all the way to, to book a call with you, but then didn't actually do it. Or someone who um, made it to the webinar replay page, but not to the shopping cart. I don't know what the bottom of your sales funnel is, but whatever mm -hmm. the like, sort of the last two or three steps of your engagement cycle before someone purchases from you is when you're going to want to use this strategy, which I haven't even showed you yet. I'm about to show you. So uh, set your optimization and delivery on the ad set level for link clicks and uh, just leave everything standard. So now we're into the ad level, which is where the actual communication gets set up. So we've set up our campaign for traffic. We've set up our ad set to run on Facebook feeds to target people who visited our cart and didn't buy. Now we're moving into setting up our advertisement. So when we're creating our ad, we want to say an ad with an image or a video, and you can upload your image, you know, whatever image that you want to show. Mm -hmm. uh, then what we want to do is say Facebook Messenger rather than a website URL. A traditional advertisement on Facebook link that's geared to generate traffic would link to a website URL. In this case, the destination is Facebook Messenger text. And then they give you the option to uh, put some structured JSON, which is essentially the content that is going to pop up when someone sees your advertisement on Facebook. And I will just read what we have in here, just so you can, for those of you that are listening, you can hear what people are going to read when they see the ad. So they see and, the, the, and the way it works is if, if I understand you right, someone's going to see this ad that you just showed us how to design, right? Yeah. With the image. As soon as they press a button, then they get this text that you're about to read us via Facebook Messenger sent to them. Am I right? That is correct. And I'm going to okay. show you. Uh, it's actually, believe it, the, the idea that it reduces conversion rate by 30% boggles my mind because check out the amount of steps that happen. So this is the advertisement that pops up. It's like, hey. Wait, you know what? Let's, let's read that, um, the, what you were about to read and I interrupted yeah, you. It's right here, actually. Okay, this is great. On this ad. So this is the advertisement. Uh, it's in the ad text as well. And it pops up in Facebook Messenger. So it says, hey, limited time discount on Boom products. Reply to this message with the word coupon to get 10% off Boom products, and then there's a link to our store, or ask us any questions you have, and we will ping you back with a response. When they click this ad, which by the way, these Facebook Messenger ads, the call to action on them says, you know, send message. Uh, so when they click that, it pops up a Facebook Messenger box right on their screen that, um, First, it pops up, pops up a light box, actually, that says, hey, this, you know, this brand will respond to you in Messenger. As soon as they close that light box, the Messenger pops up, and it says the exact same thing that the ad said. Hey, limited time discount, reply to this message with the word coupon, yada, yada. Okay, and this is about, hang on on the screen. I want to make sure I understand why you're doing this. Why do you have the ad on Facebook say the exact same thing as the Facebook Messenger text, and why would you have the ad on Facebook say something like, reply to this message when there isn't a place to, I would think that people would comment and reply with the word um, coupon. You know, here's the thing about setting this up. Mm -hmm. We just saw this technology was available and set it up as soon as it was. We didn't think too much about it. Yeah, could we do this a little better? Could we change the ad text? Could we, could we modify it? Sure, but it was working so well that we just left it alone. You I know? see. This is just you guys experimenting and you know what? It worked. I got it. I see. It I literally it cut our conversion to math. And man, we do so much volume every day that if we have a win that's this big, we just don't mess with it. We literally are like, oh my God, let's just see what happens. And so now it's been running like this for about, I don't know, 30 or 45 days and it's just crushing it. So we're just like, well, we could test another ad, but we're also pretty busy. We got a lot of stuff to do. 
you know, we're just kind of left it. And, and again, for really, anyone who's, well, who's listening, smarter from the, a messaging perspective, probably. The, the pop-up would come up the same way your, your, it would pop up if your friend or your mom would text you on Facebook Messenger. That little bubble that comes up in the, or the little screen that comes up in the bottom right corner uh, on Facebook. Or if they have Facebook Messenger on their phones, which most people do, then their phone will vibrate. Yes. Okay, and that's what it looks like. They type in the word coupon. Now, a user types in, they, if they, they, this thing pops up for them, and they, if, if they respond with the word coupon, which by the way, for us, about 5% of people think coupon is the actual coupon code, so they go to our store and they enter coupon as the coupon code, so we just went ahead and created a coupon called coupon that, that for like the 5% of people that are not tech savvy uh, to use. I see, yeah. So when the they actual reply- code is the word Cindy. Yeah. So basically what happens is they type in coupon as a reply and then we say, Hey, congrats. And this is now the chat bot at work. The chat bot says, congratulations. You've successfully accessed our special discount code. Enter code Cindy at checkout to get 10% off boom products, but hurry. This code expires in 24 hours. There's a call to action button that says shop the boom store. Then underneath that we've built out some dynamic content also in the messenger app. So also the chat bot pops up this code, pops up a call to action button, and then it pops up a carousel that shows off our different products. And this is just a carousel of our products that you can scroll through, right? And it shows off the products and then it also says, use your coupon code to get 10% off at checkout. And all this um, within the chat window. All within the chat window. Yeah. And check this out. We're about to get crazier with the chat window in a second. So to do this, we're using a tool called ManyChat. ManyChat has, which I think you guys are familiar with, um, ManyChat has this thing called keywords and what you can do is you can add what's called a keyword under their automation tab. You can add what's called a keyword. In our case, as you can see, the keyword is called coupon. So basically we have a, uh, a keyword that says message contains coupon. So, you know, ManyChat connects to your Facebook messenger. So it's tracking if someone puts in the word coupon, then you get to say, uh, and this is what that looks like. You get to say when someone types this in, they give you a WYSIWYG drag and drop editor for creating content that's going to display inside the messenger when someone types that in. So we just simply built out a little flow in here that was like, here's congratulations. Here's a little bit about our product. We've, uh, we're about to add a couple of videos in there because we're seeing that people are actually consuming these videos in messenger as I'm about mm -hmm. to show you. So what we can see is when I pulled this screenshot, this message had been sent to 974 people. It had been delivered to 970 of them. So a 99.6% delivery rate. I don't know who those other four people were that didn't get delivered to. Not 943 people actually opened it, meaning 943 people looked at the message, actually looked at it. That's 96.8% of people who received this message looked at it. I've never seen a message open rate on any channel of communication anywhere near this high, not the least of which a channel of communication that is happening between my brand and a consumer at the very bottom of my sales funnel, right? It's insane. Then check this out, 536 women, because I only, uh, only sell mm -hmm. this brand is for women, clicked on it, 55% of people. And it's probably double these numbers now. It's been running for a couple more weeks since the screenshot was taken. 55% of people who got this message actually clicked it. Now what's this is sorry. This I just want to underline this. I know there are people who are not looking at the screen and don't see this. It's totally fine. What you need to understand is, ninety six point eight percent of the people who got this message opened it. Consider Insane. consider what you're getting with email. What is it? Twenty? If you're twenty, really if you're good, lucky, 30 percent click rate over fifty percent. He's got fifty five percent click rate. That's unreal. Now keep in mind, this is a small segment of my subscriber base and I'm gonna show you some statistics that are going to a larger segment of my subscriber base that aren't this crazy, but this particular segment of my subscriber base are some of my most interested people. And yeah, what, why do you keep emphasizing that this is bottom of the funnel? Tam also emphasized that in the chat and I'm wondering why is why that I so significant that, that you've said it a couple of times and Tam has now repeated it. Yeah, thank you Tam for repeating that. You are like, you are so happy Tam. I don't think I've ever met anyone who's constantly as happy as you are. It's like really nice to, like I, on my screen right now, I see my slides. I also see your face. I don't know why, I only see your face. I know, I only see Tam's face too. It's, it's good. <laughs> 
he's cheesing super hard, which is you really like Google Doc the Tam put together with everything we need to see online about bots. This guy is fired up about them. Yeah. So cool. why why is bottom of the funnel so so interesting? Here's why. Because if a user replies back, you want to be able to respond actually. Like you, you obviously want your chat bot to respond, which it's doing, but if, if users start really engaging then you want to have someone there to co communicate with them. And if you're a business of any size at the top of the funnel, that's not going to be um, sort of, you know, possible, at least for my brand. I, I can't like we have live chat only at certain hours because we just can't manage the volume. We've got like, you know, 15 support reps and between phone, which is a huge channel for us and email. And we don't have the ability to leverage this technology at the top of our funnel. It would be too much. Um, it would just it'd be create too much. We would not be responding to people, the ones who did want our, our actual attention. And I think that if you're going to take the time and energy to actually respond to someone and you've got limited resource, which in our case we do, uh, you want to do your best people first. And so the people at the bottom of the funnel are your most uh, engaged. So those are the ones that you want to have the, you know, I most see. And they're the most valuable, which is why you're so why this, the percentage is so significant. That's correct. Now Got I'm going to show you some percentages that aren't quite as significant here in just a moment uh, for people who are at higher up in our sales funnel. Now, one thing to point out is that um, many chat gives you the ability to tag users who have opened, but not clicked. So you can, you know, tag all the people who opened, you can tag all the people who clicked. Um, I don't know if it's in there yet. Uh, if you're actually able to then segment that and broadcast to the non clickers, um, yes, don't know there that. isn't an easy, yes, you can absolutely do it. Actually, I think it is fairly easy. You can do it. Okay. Well then basically we've now started doing broadcasts in many chat. I'm going to show you how we're doing it in just a moment, but mm -hmm. what we're going to start doing is these 400 people, 400, let's say 395 people or whatever who, who opened, but didn't click would then get a met, get tagged and broadcasted. And the reason why I point that out is because that concept of Remailing unopens, remailing non clickers is uh, a concept that people are familiar with from the email marketing world. Think of this as email marketing 2.0. Mm -hmm. Replicate what you're doing with email on this communication channel because that's what it is. It's a communication channel. Check this out. You can see here that uh, when these statistics were pulled, uh, we had a, let's see, 88 purchases. By the way, each purchase for us is worth. Um, you know, 80 to 90 bucks. So that's like 10 grand in revenue here or whatever it is. Um, the Facebook revenue data is always off, but $5 and 86 cents a purchase. We were playing, we were paying $10 to get people who visited our cart and didn't buy to purchase from us with the dynamic product ads. Now we're paying 586 and it's even dropped since then. So this, even with all these steps, even with our clunky ad message, even with all that, this is still performing significantly better than someone visit the shopping cart, doesn't buy, we show them an ad that sends them back to our website. This is performing way better than that. This is like, we, sh we show them an ad that says reply to this message, they then click the message, they don't actually reply, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it may, you may consider it clunky, but it is working. Um, By the way, as, we are, as you're saying this, I'm looking at the chat, Mary, Can Mary Catherine Johnson says that she does this with people who don't click on a webinar. So she's targeting people who are not clicking on our webinars. And Kelly Garrett, who creates bots like this for her clients, says that's the way she explains it, email marketing 2.0. I feel like the word bot can be scary to newbies. And yeah. so using a phrase like email marketing 2.0 makes it a lot more approachable. Totally, totally. So that's the first way I recommend, the number one way to use it. Second way to use chatbots is automation at the onset. So basically now what you can do, uh, this is brand new. We're literally just testing this right now. I don't have slides. It came out maybe a couple weeks ago you can um, have someone comment on a post on Facebook and have that initiate a chat bot. 